welcome to the Ryder Dojo with your host, Steve Diamond. I haven't eaten. No quotes for you. And Larry Korea. Blood for the blood throne. We have a 40K <laughs> guy, so I'm trying to... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Blessed is the mind too small for doubt. Today's episode... Overcoming Setbacks with Michael Haspel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Welcome to... Welcome back to the Rider Dojo. Glad to have you back with us today. Um, we are still at uh, Rider's Cantina in Utah, and we have one of our old friends with us, uh, Michael Haspel. Um, glad to have you back with us. Glad, well, to have you with us. We haven't had you on the show yet. We've been meaning to for a long time. We yeah. keep we keep being at the same conventions, and just the timing never works yeah, out. Yeah, it never works out. <laughs> whoa, whoa. We've even shot guns together. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and so you guys know the Tales from the, the Gun episode where we talk yeah. about Tales from the Gun Range. Uh, so my, Mike was there for one of those, but we didn't record any episodes because, like, we were, like, there's no time. No, there was no, no time. No, we're just, was, but it was a lot of fun. And yeah, that was a hoot. I have increased exponentially as a shooter because of the, those classes. That was so. a hoot. Yeah, those are fun. But there, there's no time to record Writer Dojo during, no. during gun weekend. No. Well, and, and once it's done, no one's in the state of mind to do anything but sit there and eat pizza. Yeah. yeah. You I was know too what I mean? tired to do anything. Yeah. So the, the topic that we want to talk about today, and it's one that, that, that Mike here has a unfortunately i guess yes. we should say <laughs> yes. has a lot of experience in and 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 i share this i mean he and i are going to be on a panel later today that talking about this and that's the idea of overcoming career setbacks um so but before we kind of really delve into it um why don't you kind of introduce yourself to the audience um talk about what you write who, you, who you've written for you know the kind the kind of stuff you like to write etc cetera, etc cetera, and kind of how you got into the whole writing gig business Oh, okay sure um well, I've been writing pretty much my whole life. That's what everybody says. But I decided to, um, in 2009, uh, write professionally. You know, like, hey, I'm going to be a writer. And anyone listening to, do, to this, do not do what I did. I quit my day job. Holy cow. Um, yeah, I was working for Northrop Grumman at the time. Oh, no. And uh, doing satellite stuff. And yeah, that's right. My father in law <laughs> was a submarine guy at Northrop. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, I quit my day job and decided that I was going to write this idea that I had uh, called Graveyard Shift about an immortal pharaoh mm -hmm. fighting uh, an ancient vampire conspiracy in modern day Miami. And I wrote, I wrote it, took me about six months to write. And I was like, oh, that's done. Like here, you know, I'm just going to send it out and, and the deals are going to roll in and, and I'll be, I'll be great. And then I attended like my first writer's conference. Um, and they were doing like a live slush pile panel and I, well, this is gold. Like this is going to, I was, I'm a little embarrassed to submit this cause it's going to make everybody else want to quit. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Yeah, that didn't that didn't work out. <laughs> but um, I went back and reworked it quite a bit, and then got a deal from Tor in uh, 2011. And I thought, well, here it is. Like I've I've reworked the novel, I've done all this stuff and everything. The novel did get published eventually, and came out in 2017. So that lag is insane. Is dramatic. Oh, that's, that's so hard, man. <laughs> um, so I made a couple mistakes there. Uh, I wrote the second book in the series, uh, but by the time that it had come out, uh, it was down from a three book deal to a one book deal. And uh, the sales were not where we would like them. So yeah, but it's not like they put in much marketing into uh, no. Yeah. Um, and so the, the series kind of died. And and to the fans that are out there listening, and I know folks have written me, there is more in that universe coming. Um, but it's at this point, I'm probably going to have to publish it myself. Right, right. Yeah, and you did a short story in that universe too. So if you guys have read Noir, the Noir Fatale anthologies, you mm -hmm. were in the second one? Yeah, the No Game for Nights. Yeah, No Game for Nights. Yeah, so uh, we have a story in there that is uh, from that same universe. Yeah. yeah it's, it's really good. Called Storm Surge. Yeah, and it's it a good was, story. It was, it was a lot of fun to write. And it was like, um, what was interesting about that is because I was writing it and you were editing, I was like, oh, I got to throw a lot of gun stuff in here. <laughs> and then it turns out like a lot of the other stories didn't, didn't have that. <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, Larry's the gun guy. I got to step it up. <laughs> yeah. So that was kind of funny. But yeah, so I've, I've written that stuff. I've also uh, branched out and I've written some tie-in fiction. 
wrote for uh, like Warhammer 40,000, uh, which is one of my passions. It's huge. I've been playing it for 30 years or so. And uh, I absolutely adore that universe. But things go wrong there, too. So Yeah. Yeah, we can get to that later. Um, uh. One of the other things that I did was I was doing tie-in fiction. And this one, thankfully, I can say thankfully, never got off the ground. So uh, I was writing for, and I, I don't know if I can, I, I'm not going to say the IP. Sure. I'm just going to stay generic. But it was, a, it was a, an IP where there was like a special ops kind of group. And they're countering, this is in uh, December of 2021, I sent in the proposal. Um, and they were countering a, uh, a Ukrainian oligarch who's going and he, hi, he finds where a Russian submarine has sunk in shallow waters and he is going to go steal the nukes off of it to protect Ukraine. And he lost his entire family in Crimea. And uh, that's the plot. And then I sent it in and this special forces group is going to kind of mission impossible style counter that guy. And then, uh, two months later, Russia invaded Ukraine. Yeah. We know how that goes. Yeah. That so. is some timing. Um, yeah. Our, our pseudo Slavic Russian fantasy thing came out that week, the same um, week, the same week. And, uh, that was, that was great timing for us. Um, <laughs> kind of the oh no actually kind of the opposite of marketing actually yeah yeah we <laughs> that was that servants of war yeah, yes. servants of war. yeah that was the week it came out yeah there, wow. there's the there's the rev i think there's one of the reviews on amazon that says something like i can't believe they would write this in this climate we're like this is so dude insensitive. we didn't write it last night yeah <laughs> we wrote it like come on we wrote it like a year a year ago <laughs> but, but that one i was kind of glad I was like, oh, and you know, I heard back from the company and they were like, yeah, yeah there's just sorry, no way. Man. Yeah, that ain't happening. There's to no me. way we're doing that. And, and in fact, I think they shelved the entire IP. Oh. They, they said, we'll come back to that in a couple of years. Sure. Yeah. Um, ah, that makes sense. So that was, that was kind of interesting. <laughs> Dude, that, 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 that's the danger of, of playing in any sort of modern global geopolitics. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you're you're going to get bit in the butt by reality it just happens you know yeah. and that's a roll of the dice and and yeah and here i thought i was like oh i'm all cutting edge i'm gonna be you know right on the cusp of things and then it was like well yes <laughs> yes you were <laughs> yes and no <laughs> and here's the kicker too because like if you if you had done that a year earlier and it came out then you would have been like tom clancy they would have been like wow he's so he's so wise that to, mm. you know to see these things coming he he read the writing on the wall you know <laughs> yeah and <laughs> but, but yeah that happened but i've written you know i've written some other short stories mostly right now mm -hmm. uh, i've got uh, a thing that i wrote for the green hornet that that's coming um but uh it, i don't know what dates or anything yet it's they're trying to time it with an anniversary of, oh, of yeah. uh, either Green Hornet or Bruce Lee tying it to that. Cool. Um, so, but I'm very proud of that story. Uh, so I hope I hope everything works out with that one. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I, I, I'm curious, just just as a, as a as a kind of a personal question on this, um, what have you found is the biggest difference between writing stuff in your own IPs that you're creating versus um, doing a lot of the tie-in work that you do? Yeah, I'd say the biggest difference is getting getting stuff. There's more research needed in the IP work. Yeah. Like a lot more. Yeah. And especially if you're writing for something like Warhammer that has... Decades, 30, right? Yeah, 30 plus years 200, of lore. 200,000 pages of lore. Lore and novels. And there's it, it's insane. And I was writing the, my two stories that have come out for that. Uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, so far, I <laughs> have been uh, in Horace Heresy. And just in the Horace Heresy alone, there's 60 plus novels. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, and it's uh, now 40K does have, it has kind of a loophole that they added into it saying, hey, the universe is so big and all this stuff that maybe everything you've heard wasn't entirely true. So they give you a little bit of leeway. Yeah. But in my own stuff, I just have to go, well, I'm saying this happened, so it happened. <laughs> right. One nice thing about that, though, is like your own stuff. You're you're the supreme commander of the universe, you know. And and and, and 
because I, I wrote a couple novels for War Machine, and mm. uh, which has since been that company that has been sold. And you know, mm, yeah, I, they just sold to freaking uh, Steamforged. Guys. Yeah, and so I don't even know where that is now. But man, writing in other people's IPs is such a pain. I know, especially because... that Monster Hunter IP. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, to be fair, that one, that one, I'm, I'm, the, the master of that universe is fairly chill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but man, writing in other people's universes is so hard when there's so much established lore out there. And uh, and they like for me, they had like the like the lore master, the guy mm. at the company who was the dude who reviewed some of the harshest edits I've ever got. It has nothing to do with my writing. Like, no, we can't do that. No, we can't do that. That, that doesn't exist. No, that does dig. That do, this does exist. You should use that instead. It's like, oh my gosh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah. He's like, there's your, no way to keep up. Your character doesn't have a shield, but you say he's using a shield. How come he has a shield? Where did the shield come from? When did he start using the shield? And so I just took a paragraph from one of their lore books and I just passed it to him. I said, this is what I'm basing this <laughs> off of. Is that good enough? And they're like, that'll work. I'm like, oh my god! Like, I don't know, man. Yeah, and uh. I don't want to let the readers down because, in in the I've loosened up in my old age, you know. Mm. But in the past, I'd be the guy who's like, yeah, that's I saw Sulu hit this button, but that's not where that button is. Yeah, like On page one hundred and sixty-seven <laughs> of the compendium from nineteen seventy-nine. It says, yeah. So I used to be that guy where Canon reigns supreme and i was just like if you violate canon you're kind of and i still kind of believe this in, in my heart of hearts is if you violate canon you're sending a code to the reader or the fans that they don't have to invest in yeah. time well in your series well and in, in that that you don't respect the series mm -hmm. well you there's know? there's canon and then there's canon you know, there's stuff that's like big universe, like like this is how the universe works. Then there's like little nitnoidy stuff, like which did he push the yellow button or the right, red right. button? You know what I'm saying? So there's, there's stuff like when Star Wars goes and has the hyperspace maneuver that like yeah destroys you know nine previous movies worth of space battles with one easy yeah. button. There's that canon where you're like WTF, man. You know, so I and uh, that particular one upsets me because they could have restored like at that point a lot of people hated Holdo. And they could well, have yeah. they could have restored her in yeah. that scene by saying, Hey, everyone needs to evacuate the ship and it's like in a universe with droids, why would you have to stay to pull off that maneuver? And it's like, oh, because the droids have a failsafe, they won't do it. You can only do this manual and by the way, it's a million to one shot. Yeah, and, they added a million to one shot. We would all been like, okay, yeah, cool. and then you make you turn her into a hero well, who's like, no, I'm staying behind to manually do this because there's all these fail safes that pretend that pre pre prevent you from doing this, but I have the admiral code that bypasses everything. Well, and even then, it's a roll of the dice, yeah. you know. Well, or or you know, I mean, they'd already established in a previous movie in Rogue One that like. Ships colliding against each other in, in, in just regular speeds is totally fine. Mm -hmm. It works, and it's devastating. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the, that's the final scene in Rogue One. Yeah, right? yeah. And it's awesome. That part's awesome. Why didn't she just do that? Right. Like, and, and I think that that's a lot of the issues when, when, when you're working in other people's IPs is if you're not well-versed in it enough to know what the logical intricacies are, just logic then you kind of have no business writing in that IP. Yeah. And it's like, that's, that's so true. Cause it's like when, when I got picked to write Warhammer stuff and it was, it's like a 20 year journey of me going, Hey, I want to write Warhammer mm -hmm. and sending stuff into them and everything. And you'd established your own cred. Too, yes. that You had the capability. That's a big thing with the IPs is that people think they could just go do it. Almost never. It's always somebody who's proven they're a writer on their own. Mm -hmm. That they'll right. hire. But if they wanted me to write, say, Barbie or My Little Pony. Um, <laughs> that would have been epic. It, well, I would have tried Warhammer to do. Warhammer 40K. <laughs> Warhammer 40K Barbie. Barbie. It would be amazing. <laughs> but I would have tried to do, like, if, it, if it's like, hey, I have to take this job, you mm -hmm. know. Um, I would try my utmost to steep myself in as much Barbie lore or My Little Pony or whatever. I wouldn't go into it going, I don't need to. 
You know, because you hear that a lot. I'm going gonna, gonna to do it better than they ever did. Right. Or, and you hear the creators like, well, we didn't want to be influenced by oh, this, like the Halo oh, guys. Yeah. So we didn't play any of the games. Or The oh, Witcher. Dude. Or The Witcher. Oh, my gosh. Or just so much stuff. That Lord of the like, Rings or Wheel of Time. I, I, at this point, I'm just listing all the IPs that are currently. Well, like up. I wrote for Aliens and I discovered that like the back. I tried to steep myself. I love aliens, but like I was like, if I'm going to write this, I want to make sure it's spot on, right? So I tried to do my homework. It's impossible because basically every director that's come along has thrown out whatever they felt like and just did, you know, new stuff. Yeah. And so I'm like trying to put together like a timeline continuity kind of thing to, to work with to write this one thing, <laughs> one story. And I was like, it, 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 it's just chaos. Yeah. And and like all the backstory stuff like would be contradictory. And there's like world guides that contradict that. And this world guide contradicts that. And I was just like, ah. Because <laughs> <laughs> cause I was clearly one where each, each creative vision that came in just tossed all the stuff they didn't yeah. like. And just did whatever they felt like. Yeah. I mean. There, there's a lot of preparation that, I, that goes into IP writing that I think people don't realize. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, like, well, like when I did, when I did the story for, for Larry's monster hunter, um, it was, I was writing about the Vatican combat exorcists. And so I went through the, at the, at that time, the first five books and I read every mention of them in the books again, just to see like, okay, how, how, how are they referenced? What are people's attitudes? Is there any, is there any weird little nugget in here that I've, mm -hmm. that I've missed that I could, that'll add a little bit of authenticity and then in that at that time period there there actually wasn't a lot no, it was there wasn't mainly much. it was mainly kind of the chapter bumps in um in alpha yeah. from earl's point of view and then guterres who in in uh in nemesis and so it was me going well crap good thing i know the person who runs this ip i'm like larry <laughs> what is this he's like i don't know. <laughs> i haven't done that part yet but make this guy mystical i'm like all right i mean there there's so much prep that goes into it. I told you that World Master was chill. I know. <laughs> um, okay, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, um, I want to get into the the challenges and the setbacks that have um, uh, punched both you and I in the face. Mm -hmm. And and we'll talk about kind of what those are in, in as much or little detail as you need to. And then we'll, um, and we'll talk about what we've been doing to try to overcome them. All right? Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Wounded World War I veteran Elsie retires to a reclusive and mysterious house left to her by her dead father, only to be caught in the throes of love and eldritch terror as romance mixes with Prohibition-era dark magic and evil cults in this daring horror story. Elsie is a former debutante who only wants to isolate herself and heal from her physical and emotional wounds when a dark and malevolent hole appears in her fields. Forever Fields is a dark, historical horror novel with a romance subplot set in the year 1920 and is being published through Wicked House Publishing with a release date of July 5th. Pre-order is available now for Kindle with paperback pre-order coming soon. The Writer Dojo has been instrumental in helping me write this book and get it published and I encourage everyone to listen to and put into practice what they learn from Larry and Steve. All right, everybody. Welcome back. All right, Mike. So we're we're gonna get into the uh, into the into the meat of the details. Hard hitting mm -hmm. journalism, right here, baby. Okay. Whole point of this episode, apart from introducing our audience to 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 you, our our, our friend who we've we've known for years now, and that's talking about career setbacks. Um, uh, Larry, at the, in, during the break, you know, one of the things you said is. It doesn't really matter where at in your career you are. You 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 are. The idea of you know an existential threat or the potential of a career setback coming, it's possible for everyone. Oh yeah. Now, unfortunately, <laughs> for you and I, we've we've probably had more than our fair share of them. Um, so, uh, in as in as much or as little detail as you want. Let's start talking about some of the some of the career setbacks that that you have unfortunately had heaped on your plate. Yeah. So the the first the poor one, one, obviously. Yeah. The first one was and and let me caveat this by saying that uh, Tor was a great company to work with, and I would work with them any time ever again. 
Uh, and once we got into the process of actually, okay, the book's coming out now and, and started getting edits and copy edits and all that stuff, all that ran very smoothly, but it was getting up to that point that took an excessive amount of time. Mm -hmm. It was just absolutely crazy. Oh, like five years. Um, yeah, clo yeah, it was like six, six, almost Jeez. seven. Wow. Holy um, <laughs> and again, um, example sometimes that your purpose in life might just be to serve as an example to others <laughs> so if you're going to do that and you get it don't wait for that book to come out write another book keep writing and don't write it in the same universe write a totally different thing and keep going because i wrote my second one in the same universe and the series got canceled well, so and its release hinged upon the release and the success of yes. book one, which got delayed for freaking ever. Yeah. And also like one of the urban fantasy was a thing when, when I got the deal and urban fantasy had already moved on. Not that it's over. Obviously there's still a lot of fans there, but it wasn't what it was mm -hmm. when, when the book came out. Um, but that was like my first real big setback. And for years I didn't, I didn't really get anything else. I, I wrote a couple short stories. I did, you know, some things here and there. And I really thought with Warhammer that that was my escape patch. Mm -hmm. I was just like, I'm going to write, if I can write a Warhammer book a year, that that's my pay the bills kind mm -hmm. of book. And then I can, I can write my own stuff. Well, I mean, the Warhammer, I mean, there's pretty good money in yes. those Warhammer books because yeah. the fan base is large it's huge. and it's and rabid. 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 Do they um, do they still pay royalties like normally or because it's a because yeah. IP? So it's still yeah. okay. And it's it's good royalties. I'm See, not that, gonna lie. That's interesting because because a lot of the 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 um, like right for hire type IP stuff that that we've done or that we've seen some is. Some has been royalties and others have been one and it's just, done. Yeah, it's just a flat yeah. fee. And that's right? what I was expecting. I was expecting, hey, this was like work for hire. I get paid. Because I've done stuff for, I did stuff for World of Tanks. Mm -hmm. And that was a one and done. It was it was the most money I've ever been paid for per word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was like, holy cow, if you can write for video games, this is the way to go. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but that was like a one and done. And then the, the Warhammer stuff we weren't even expecting anything. They contacted us and said, Hey, we've got royalties to send you. And you didn't send us an invoice. Like what? And we were like, for what? <laughs> and then they're like, for these stories. And I was just like, really? And it was, it turned out it was pretty healthy money. Nice. Um, so it was a good deal, but here comes, here, here comes com the butt. Here, here comes the other kick in the teeth. Okay, <laughs> yeah. here we go. So I got selected by them, um, great editors, by the way, and I would work with them again anytime um, to write for something big coming out. Um, it, it hasn't come out yet, and I'm still probably tied to the NDA. So I'm not space my say little ponies. And and uh, so I was just like, this is huge, and this is going to kind of launch my career, yeah. like for real. And uh, wrote a novel. And they didn't like what I did with it. And to their credit, they were like, hey, we're going to give you a second chance. And so I wrote an entire other novel. And th this, this uh, took about a year. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when this was set. You and I talked. Yeah. Like, I think, yeah. We, I think we ran to each other at Fanex. And you're like, I'm doing this crazy rewrite of a novel of a novel that I've already written. Yeah. Yeah. And then they rejected that one as well oh, and oh. the pro the project for me i don't know if, but the project for me was canceled at that mm -hmm. point and it was devastating like i essentially walked away from writing after that because mm -hmm. i was just like well if i can't write this then yeah i'm done you know i was just like this is it's over so i kind of just uh walked away from writing for and it's it's been about two years now, mm -hmm. and I'm just now, kind of getting back into the, getting back into the, like, hey, I, I have ideas and I want to I want to write this and everything. And what what occurred to me, and this is actually because of LTUE of all of all things, what occurred to me is I was feeling very worthless and just I'm a nobody and this sucks. And I I gave it my best shot. And you know what? At the end of the day, I had a book published by Tor, which was like my favorite publisher. I can't even name how many, 
how many novels of you know in my home library come from Tor. Um, and I was like, that's that could be good enough. But one of the things I adore is Joseph Campbell. Mm -hmm. And I was I reread The Hero of a Thousand Faces like every couple of years. And I was rereading The Hero of a Thousand Faces. And I realized he's he didn't write that to analyze Star Wars or to analyze he was he was basing that off mythological and religious texts. And it's and those are a blueprint on how to navigate life. Mm -hmm. And so I started looking at it and going, oh, this is the belly of the whale. Mm -hmm. I'm in the belly of the whale right now. Like, that's why this setback happened. And if I quit now, then I don't complete the hero's journey. I just yeah. left. Then you're, then you're just a Zack Snyder film. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and no one wants to be that. No. And so... <laughs> that really helped me. And I was given the Toastmaster speech at LTUE. And that was, I started writing it as like this cautionary tale thing. And then realized when oh, I was rereading re the hero's journey at the same time and everything. And that all kind of crystallized. And I was just like, oh, but if I stop now, then, then the, you, that's not what God wants me to do. Mm -hmm. Like, that this is all part of the process and this is part of like me getting kicked in the teeth that's supposed to happen mm -hmm. that's actually the best use of that joseph campbell hero's journey i've ever heard oh wow <laughs> well because because everybody like tries to shoehorn it into books where it doesn't necessarily matter or belong but for you to use it personally to realize oh crap i can't stop here Mm -hmm. Right, right. You know, that's awesome. If that if that's your motivator that's getting you back in the saddle, I think that's rad. Yeah. That's yeah. rad, man. Cuz this yeah. business is hard and we it's we, rough. we it, it kicks people in the teeth and I've seen so many dudes with like great talent hanging up. Mm -hmm. You know? Guys I mean, who are way more talented than I am. Like they're better writers than I am. And 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 they and they quit. And I've seen other dudes who are worse writers than I am. Make millions of dollars, <laughs> yeah. you know, it, it's such a hard business. It's such a weird business for, for you to get back onto it and be like, oh, yeah, this is the downturn. This is the, this is the slump, but I can push through. I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's really hard. Um, I, I mentioned this in a, in one of our previous episodes that writing becomes such a solitary event. Um, and it's really, really easy. And it's in, in, in frankly, it's inevitable that we get in our own heads too much. Um, and when, when something like this happens, like what happened to you or, or, or like me, you know, like I had, I basically had three publishers cave on me on my first book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dude, you, you know, you, you just played publisher freaking, um, I don't even know what the game. I mean, I mean it was like whack-a-mole at that point. Yeah. I publisher mean, whack-a-mole. I was going to um, say publisher minesweeper. Oh, yeah. No. That's actually more apt. Um, it, it was, there were several times in there where I basically just was like, you know what? I'm just not writing. I'm just not going to write. I'm just not going to. What's the point? Mm -hmm. um, and and it's really really easy to get weighed down with that. And it's not that it's it's not that it's a uh, an illegitimate thought. Um, I think that's the insidiousness of that thought is that there is a little bit of nugget of truth in it because of how harsh the business is. You know, it's this business doesn't care. Well, and the deck is stacked against everybody. It is. Like like from the get-go, the deck is, well, not everyone. And there's a few golden children out there. But for the most part, yeah. deck stacked against you. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. This is It's it's hard. And I think anything you, anything you can find to glom onto yeah. that gives you that, like, uh, that hope, that gets you going again, I think that's freaking rad. Grab onto it. I was going to ask a, a dumb question. This is a business question that because me and Steve has some experience with this. The stuff that you worked for for forty k, mm -hmm. is it the kind of thing that you because you got two novels? Oh yeah, yeah. Is it the kind of thing you could scrub the serial numbers no. off of? No, no. Oh. It's very, it's super it's on point. Very, very on point. Oh, with, okay. Yeah. With like specific characters. And, okay. Yeah. Because yeah. the backstory on Servants of War, we talked about this on the show. So originally that the pitch, we hadn't written it yet, but the pitch for it and the outline was for a war machine project Yeah, that, that didn't materialize because oh. they were doing books through Orbit. Mm -hmm. And so we prepared a pitch for Lou Anders at Orbit. Pyre. 
Oh, Pyre. No, or Pyre. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lou Anders a Pyre, and we prepared a pitch for him, but that 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 business deal fell apart. Well, and, we we were we were supposed to come in and, and kind of resuscitate that sub license, that kind of that sub rights series that they were doing, because the first guy who did it, who was supposed to do book two in that series, mm -hmm. took the advance and ran. Because oh. he, tur he turned in an outline, which, which as an yeah. IP guy, you understand. Like, you have to turn in an outline. They have to approve the outline, make sure that you're not full of crap, mm -hmm. and, and, and then go through the process. He turned in the outline, and, and they're like, bro, have you even – do you even know how to spell War Machine? He's like, nah, and I don't care. <laughs> wow. And so he took the advance and walked. So me and Steve came in, and we had a pitch and uh, uh, an outline, and they they – they liked it, but then the project just kind of like died business wise. Yeah. So a couple years later, me and Steve were like, "Hey, we got this perfectly good outline for a really cool story." And so we just we took everything that was War Machine and scrapped it, yeah. and we had the story, the characters, our characters, and all the cool stuff. We just threw away everything that wasn't ours, mm -hmm. and basically restructured it and wrote Servants yeah. of War. And Servants of War is amazing. I well, and, that book. and a lot of the stuff that was the War Machine, uh, like because it was Kador. Yeah. So a lot of the stuff that was like basically um, specific there, we just went with like basic Slavic mythology mm -hmm. that everybody owns that was just there well, and, and I, ran with it. I, I mean, I wrote a 30, 33, 35,000 novella, 30,000 word novella for them for War Machine. Um, and they, didn't, they, didn't they never did anything with it yeah. because they never published it. They. I don't know. I, I'm. I think there was a lot of political reasons for that. It was. It was kind of at the same time that they started going dark on us about servants of war. Yeah. Um, but um, I, I've been asked that exact same question about that novella. Like, yeah, so and, and I looked. Yeah. I'm like, C could I scrub this? Could I like just scrub this and and make it something kind of cool and unique? And the answer is no. Yeah. There's way too many like very specific details yeah. in there. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was wondering because if you if you could and you could like replace their characters with your characters and replace yes, the technology with your technology excalibur 30k yeah. <laughs> but if you can't you can't and you and you know that better than yeah, anybody yeah if there's, it is no, there's just no way no, yeah. there's no way because at that point it's like you just write new books yeah. right you know right and it, it does crack me up that certain things like like hell divers uh the the game you mm -hmm. know hell divers 2 mm -hmm. it's very adjacent to yeah. to like like down to like the terminids instead of tyranids yeah and, and stuff like that so it, it cracks me up but yeah i thought about it and was like is there any way to like salvage this and and uh and i'm sure that certain parts of it are going to get reused oh yeah oh <laughs> yeah. yeah and like i uh, we talked about the show a little while ago we talked about the very first thing we wrote the very first novel i wrote wasn't good but every single good part of it wound up getting used later every good character mm -hmm. that was mine got used in something else later you know? Yeah. So there's not really ever any wasted writing, but man, there's wasted time. Right. You right. know? And that's, that's one of the things that I don't know if it's a critique of the writing community or not, but I look at it and I go, Oh man, I lost a year and other people have put out three books in that time and stuff like that. But you don't know what's going on because writers, we put up our, our sales face, right? Yeah. Our persona. And we just go, Hey, like, everything is hunky dory and my sales are great and I'm working on this and everything. And you don't know that this person has a second mortgage on their house mm -hmm. and all, dude, all this other stuff is happening. Dude, it's so true. It, that's what we talk about the show because there's like, there's who you are and there's who you are for the purpose of selling books. Mm -hmm. And some of us is closer than others. And some people it's two totally different people. Mm -hmm. I mean, me, I am who I am. That said, when I go out there, I try to put on a aura of success and happiness because the peep, the writers that like are themselves in public, but it's all doom and gloom and woe is me and writing is hard and business sucks. And this isn't fair. Everyone hates me. Everyone hates me. And dude, that's the kiss of death mm -hmm. because I mean, I, I, we all know those guys, right? And a lot of them, they're our friends, but like you read their, their social media profile which should be for like selling books and it's the antithesis of marketing mm -hmm. because the fans i mean success breeds success it's like salesmen even a crappy salesman will wear a nice watch to mm -hmm. have nice shoes and drive a nice car because for the customer it's like oh this guy looks successful ergo he must be successful i will treat him successful writing is the same thing 
So a lot of times when we're struggling, we don't come out and say that stuff. So we're suffering with it internally. And we're all artists too. Yeah. <laughs> and we're artists are all a bag of nuts, right? And so I know there's been times where I've been struggling with something, but I can't say that in public. Right. I can't show weakness, mm -hmm. you know, especially for me. I've got like actual literal enemies, people who hate me. So the minute I was to put out anything that shows that I'm human or fallible, they'll pounce on oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And so it makes it hard. So when you're suffering, you suffer in silence. Mm -hmm. and that sucks. That's hard. Yeah. And it, it felt like when that happened with me in Black Library, it felt like nobody else cared. I would tell people like, hey, this just happened. And everybody was like, oh, you can work through it. You'll be fine. Or it's not the end of the world or whatever. I'm like, you don't understand at all what I'm feeling or. You tell us though. You're I like, did. You tell us. Yeah. Like, we had that conversation yeah. like, when you came to gun to the yeah. gun thing and you yeah. told me what happened. And like my eyes went wide and I went, oh, dang. It's like, yeah. dude, I wrote 200,000 words I can't use. And it's like, <laughs> oh, oh, gosh. Yeah. yeah so we, we, we get it. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, that is a kick in the nuts, man. <laughs> that is like, oh. It, it, I, I find it to be, I, yeah, I find this to be very difficult. I mean, the, obviously the, this is a, this is an industry that, I mean, it doesn't care. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. And, and that's because it's, it's not a, the, the industry isn't a person. It's a, it's a, it's a thing, yeah. you know? There's individual um, people in it that are fantastic. Yes, and and there are a lot of fans and, and editors and agents and, and and so on and so forth and fellow authors who, who who do care. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I I've been I've been very vocal about this, and that's that when, you know, the last couple times when I've just been like, man, f this, um, you know, I've had I've had a good uh, support network who do happen to know what I'm going through, yeah. and they do understand like. Oh yeah, Steve's getting, you know, Steve's in the middle of his third company in a row that's been bought out and hates him. Um, yeah, there's been know. times where I've been your support network, and yeah. there's been times where you've been my support yeah. network. Yeah, and 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 the the one and I shared this the other day, and that's that. There there was one point very 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 recently when I was just like, man, f this, um, and and someone asked me, they're like, oh well, cool, what are you going to do with all that extra time you have now? I'm like. I mean, probably think about some stories I'd want to write. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Did, yeah. did did some of that thought come into your head during all this stuff? Like, you're like, screw this. But man, I really like this idea. Oh, yeah. And it's like, and that's the thing is it's just like, I think it's just part of who we are. Yeah. So it was just like, well, and I, I actually had this thought. Oh, man, this would be a really cool. I'm not a writer anymore. Oh. Like, I actually told myself that. Like, mm. stop. That's, Stop doing it. Oh, You're brutal. not that person anymore. And then it's just like, no, I'm totally that person. No, I am that guy. Yeah. I, I think most of us, we get into this, we're storytellers anyway, right? And um, it, we're, it's compulsive. So even if we weren't doing it for a living, we'd probably still be doing it for fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we're good enough, we can make a living at it. You know, everybody here at this table, we can all do this and we know we can do it. It's just life kicks us in the nuts. And it's like, how do I, how do I circumvent that and come back and do it more, mm -hmm. you know? So I, I'm going to say, I, I, so I don't know if you want to tell us, what do you got next? Uh, since, I'm working since on. Since you decided you're, you're yeah. not done. Yeah, since, you, since we pulled you back in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm working on a weird fantasy thing that nice. we'll see. It's kind of sci-fi fantasy. It's a blend, um, but it's the best way I can just kind of comp it quickly because i'm only like forty thousand words into it yeah, yeah i haven't is like kind of the guns of navarone um kind of like you know a, mm -hmm. an assembling the team mm -hmm. the dirty dozen kind of story oh, i love that stuff but in a fantasy setting oh nice. yeah I, I i i love that okay if you read my thing i love that i love teams i love yeah. i'm I put together a team. Yeah, exactly. I but it's that. like, I don't want to say the dirty dozen because they're not all criminals or whatever, but it's, it's more like the guns of Navarone, but you need, mm -hmm. you need the guy who's the explosive specialist and the, you know, the, yeah. the mage and the, yeah. you know, the, the demigod and all yeah. this stuff. This is actually stuff. interesting too. Cause one of the things we talked about the other day was somebody was asking us on the live show about reinventing yourself or like, when do you want to go like different genres? When do you want to stay in the genre? Well, this is a case where you've done urban fantasy. Mm -hmm. and, and you threw that out there and because of business wise you got you got stomped because of business 
wasn't your fault. It's a good book. Mm -hmm. You're a good writer. For the guys, uh, for those of you listening, I recommend it. It's a good book. Yeah, Graveyard Shift. Yeah, Graveyard Shift. Check it out. Um, but you got hosed by business. But that was your that was your delving into urban fantasy. Now you can delve into sci-fi, mm -hmm. and there's nothing holding you back. Yeah, you're not you're not chained to any particular thing. So now is a good chance to go explore that thing. Plus, if you're feeling passionate about it, man, that is the that is the secret weapon to productivity is well, and, is being excited. And, yeah. and just from a just from a just a straight up logistical standpoint. You know, let's 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 say that you you start seeing success in this. Well, guess what? Now you have these these other urban fantasies that you can relaunch. Mm -hmm. and be like, oh, and by the way, yeah, remember remember me? Yeah, I'm still here. Here it yeah, is. Yeah. Um. And 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 I think that's great. I mean, I yeah, I, it's no secret that Larry and I love those kind of stories. You know, because Seven Samurai sort of. Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. Not was, not the Zack Snyder way. Well, for me, that was um, <laughs> screw that. That was into the storm. I straight up yeah. did a. We got to put that together was dirty a dozen. team. That was, that was, that was very dirty, dirty dozen. dozen. Yeah. Uh, for me, it was like it was a basically not quite the penal battalion, but close. Oh, well, nice. some of the guys were the penal battalion. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, so I, I love that kind of story. I was going to say so. So with your experience, because you've done trad now and you've done um, right for somebody else's IP, are you going to do indie? Or are you going to go? Yeah, I'm try to sell it again. Try to launch. We'll see. But I've got like a, I guess it's called a mosaic novel set in the world of graveyard shift and it's called of and i kind of took some <laughs> stole something from larry with his like monster hunter files okay that's what so, i heard. Uh, yeah, yeah that's yeah. what i'm here for so i was <laughs> like oh i'll do umbra umbra is the organization they used to work for so in graveyard shift they're not working for them anymore but they used to work for this shadowy hence umbra mm -hmm. um government organization where they used to the nice. kill, kill hunt vampires under cover for the NSA. Um, but, uh, um, so these files are all stories that happened before graveyard shift mm -hmm. when they're still doing that. So like one of the stories takes place in 1963. I've got one that's more of like a medieval mm -hmm. kind of story, one in ancient Rome, like all the, but it's all the same characters. So you yeah, get yeah, to yeah. see it. It's nice to have immortal characters or long lived characters because right. then you can just play with them for a long time. But I probably will have to, uh, indie publish that or self publish it. Right. Yeah. Um, well, and it's a good chance. I mean, that's a weird market and it's a competitive market. But if you can unlock the code mm -hmm. and find the fan base over there, it's lucrative. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, like, well, yeah. and you know, I mean, in trad pub, you're you're anywhere between ten and twenty percent royalties, right? In Indie pub is, but if, if you're charging two ninety nine to nine ninety nine a book, you're seventy percent. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, well, and we just had an episode about Ku with a guy who knows a lot about Ku, yeah. and that's something I'm doing this next year to try because I've never done it before. So, 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 regardless of where your career is, is one of those things too. Um, there's setbacks that are outside setbacks, and there are setbacks that are self inflicted setbacks because we get stagnant. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing I'm trying to avoid. I know too many guys who've been doing this as long as I have who lose it. They lose the threat. You know what I mean? They get left behind. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be that guy. You know, I want to stay. I want to stay doing this until I'm really old. I want to do this till I die. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and as far as when that'll be is entirely decided on like my cholesterol and the ATF. <laughs> so. <laughs> 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 those are the two most likely if you're in the betting pool right now those are the two th yeah. most likely things to get me <laughs> all right so we're, we're basically we're, we're we're out of time we got to go get lunch and stuff so none of us die oh dude i'm um, so hungry but, <laughs> i haven't eaten um, today <laughs> so before we leave um there there are there are a lot of authors out there who have or, or a lot of young authors or people who, who who are trying to become an author or whatever who have had setbacks and a lot of them are not their own fault um like mine and yours that, that had nothing to do with us nothing um what's the best piece of advice that you can think of no. at this point this is not original never no. give up there never you go. surrender hell that, yeah <laughs> that's what i would say hell yeah all right with that we're gonna leave you guys this is the writer dojo we'll see you on the next one Writer Dojo is Steve Diamond and Larry Correa. Produced by Jack Wilder, 
and Bear and Hair Studios. Theme song, Word Mercenaries by Craig Nivo. New episodes come out every Wednesday wherever you stream your content. If you enjoyed this podcast, you can help support us by going to anchor.fm slash writer dojo, by leaving a five-star rating and review, and by helping to spread the word. To advertise on the Writer Dojo, email ads at writerdojo.com. All questions and comments can be emailed to questions at writerdojo.com. Like, I didn't have parents. I was conceived by the force and raised in a coven of lesbian space witches. (laughs) 